Um, the Palestinians want to um, achieve a maximum publicity for their cause so they can get a statehood without having to do negotiations with Israel, preferably uh, unilaterally at the UN, without a lot of positive publicity to their size and without their issue being relevant. They cannot achieve that. And that's what they hope to achieve. They saw after Oslo that terror pays. You know, we, after the first intifada, there was all that terror. We gave them Oslo. They got areas. So they saw terror pays. Every time uh, we give in to them, we show appeasement, they see that terror pays. And under Obama, the eight years we had, we had a U.S. administration that was encouraging nonstop appeasement to terrorists and slapping allies in the back. It happened like this throughout the world. The Arab uh, Gulf countries also felt slapped in the back with the whole Iranian nuclear deals. We're not the only U.S. allies that felt slapped in the back by the Obama administration. So, um, so, so this is the whole uh, goal related to that. I think that even though domestically in the U.S. Donald Trump, uh, you know, uh, had a lot of anti-Semitism from his camp, um, it's also true that he's gonna he's a big supporter of Israel, and he promised to move the embassy to Jerusalem. He made a lot of uh, nice promises to Israel to throw out the Iranian nuclear deal. He uh, he you know he's he really means business, and he's not somebody who wants to mess with. He's somebody who blows up at you if you're against him, and he's not a big fan of the Palestinians, so maybe they're scared of him. So uh, they realize that unless they do something drastic, they won't really be relevant under a Donald Trump administration unless they have to uh, agree to compromise with Israel, and only then would he uh, want it, there to be negotiations. So uh, th this is how they make themselves relevant to other actors like Russia, the EU, the other countries. I definitely believe that the, our, the Joint Arab List has way too much incitement, that they need to be encouraging uh, peaceful uh, uh, ways uh, and not uh, to be so insightful in their messages. And uh, I don't think that Ahmed Tibi and Hanin Zawabi uh, give conciliatory messages. Now, there are Israeli Arab civilians who have, who said that they would be willing to help both Jews and Arabs who had to evacuate their homes from uh, Haifa. And uh, the, 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 but but it's like I, you don't see this coming from the the leadership. I think it would be it's time to um, force um, the all Knesset. Uh, parties have to be against hate speech, and if they say anything inflammatory, they have to be eliminated. I think that the Israeli Arabs deserve a better leadership, one that cares about improving the infrastructure in their villages, providing uh, more opportunities for Arab women who are suffering, and uh, not somebody who just cares about the Palestinians and not them. I think that um, some uh, uh, there's definitely some Israeli Arabs who want Israel wiped off the map, and Hanin uh, Zawabi uh, represents them. But at the same time, I also think that there's a lot of average people that just want to live their lives, uh, you know, just like uh, me and you. They have a shop. If Jews don't come to Arab villages uh, to shop on Shabbat because they're open on Shabbat, um, you know, a lot of secular Jews like to do that, uh, go to Shabbat shop in Arab villages on Shabbat, that affects their business and that affects their economics. And they don't really care about the surrounding. They just want a better life for their uh, children and um, and for their families. And, uh, you know, the, this uh, all this destruction really affects them. The, so uh, they also are victims, in a way, of their own leadership. My thesis talks about the motivations of the uh, Palestinian female suicide bombings, like why they uh, chose to wait the attack. That's chapter four of my book. And then I go into the Arab media coverage and the Israeli media coverage, which demonstrates how these, uh, how the media reacted to them, encouraged the phenomenon. And then uh, the, the, the next chapter, I talk about the terror appeasement at Ben Gurion University. They did not, my thesis advisor did not want me to use the word terrorist to describe these Why? women. 
There's a history of uh, radical left ideology at uh, Ben Gurion University. Um, I was there, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, between uh, around uh, 2009 through uh, 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 the 2010 academic year, and then I stayed a couple years after to complete my thesis. And um, during that period of time, um, there was I, I was the one behind the Oren Yiftachau story that Al Sheva published. I'm the same Rachel. Abraham, where uh, Orni Iftichal, um, you know, threatened me um, because I was writing exposés showing him basically how um, teaching international students studying in Israel who are going to go on to join the U.S. State Department, the, the, the Canadian government, other places in Europe, to hate Israel. And I did, was doing it work at Israel Academia Monitor um, exposing that, and he didn't like how I was exposing all the anti-Israel sentiment in his class. So um, he threatened, uh, Ben-Gurion University actually threatened legal action and only because of the intervention of a friendly member of the BGU Board of Governors did that stop. So at the same university, there was also Professor Maya Rosenfeld that was um, teaching uh, Kanafis in the land of the sad oranges, which encouraged terrorism for the popular front for the liberation of Palestine. There was the whole, um, you know, uh, Pal Palestinian flag waving at the around the Gaza flotilla time on campus. They were doing uh, tours with breaking the silence to Hebron, teaching international student state user, you know, tours with Iri Amin of Jerusalem. So at the same university, they told me that I could not uh, write a, a thesis using the word terrorist. So I compromised. I said suicide bombers and their dispatchers, which is neutral. And then I, uh, and then uh, after I published it with Geffen Publishing House, uh, I changed I changed it all to terrorists, and I included a chapter talking about terror appeasement in academia and how journalists today can set an example. And I include my own journalism work for the last three or four years. Uh, talk first, I was a content manager and writer for United with Israel, and I had a blog in the Jewish press. And from there, I switched to Jerusalem Online News, and I talked about the example of how you can write news articles without giving in to the publicity objectives of the terror organizations. I discussed how um, it's possible to give coverage to the news without, you know, you know, calling the terrorists liber uh, liberated women. I understand it's a free press. We can't suppress the news, even though that would be ideal for preventing terrorism. But at the same time, you can at least not call them militants. You can at least not call them liberated women. This is absurd. Yeah, it's absurd, but we live in the world of the absurd now.